but... So this is the armour on here? This is the armour Mark 1 and it's a 1.7 HMR. Shooting steels at 111 yards. Can find them. There they go. Clip. And this is the Armour Mark 1. Uh, but with two two subsonics. Okay. Same model rifle. Oh, that is quiet. Not hearing the steel though, Ali. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I um, <laughs> didn't want to make it louder by, <laughs> yeah. by ringing the gong. Um, and then if you, and then the is yours got ammo? Uh, yeah, it's clear, I think. Is it? Oh, I've just still got one in. Right. And then this is the uh, EOB. Oh, action. Armor Mark One. Uh, Armor EOB Two Two Subsonic. Is this on? Where I wish wind's playing it off. Aim at the big one. <laughs> yeah. I was. <laughs> I don't know where they were. You can drop it short. So you can, you're out. There's not a lot of difference. There's not, there's not enough difference between the mark one and the mark one. The Mark One tends to be more popular with people that like the the look of a of an overbarrel moderator. Yeah, like this one. Um, We're on about this one. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit. You know, this is 155. The other one's 100. So I say to people, look, if, if you're not worried about the uh, the looks, go with the EOB because you'll save yourself some money. Yeah. Um, and it's um, yeah, it's good. That it's does only look pretty cool on there, I must admit. Yeah. In the barrel. Yeah, and then if you want to be Really over the top, you've got the um, the center fire juices mod on a rim fire, on a rim fire, which is um, very quiet. Well, if we put it on the, the bolt action because there's a, you get a lot of noise with the cycling of the um, yeah, the Ruger, yeah, cycling of the round. But if we put it on the uh, bolt action. Proper in the field testing this is. Yeah. Apologies for the mess, people. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, cut, cut. cut we'll cut that. <laughs> That won't make That's the what he that thinks. Won't, that won't make the DVD. <laughs> right. Oh my lord, it's the pressure. I'll tell you what, while you're loading that, I'll just uh, you know, go on to something else. Right. So obviously this is excessively large, but it doesn't get much quieter. I won't hit anything again. I'm not sure where it is. Oh, it's a hit. Oh, I've given it way too much drop then. Clip. Nice. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and this is a first. We're doing a tabletop review of Calibre Innovation's full range of moderators, and we happen to have Ali from Calibre In Innovations behind the scenes. Say hello, Ali. Yeah, hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> so talk us through the range then, uh, Ali, what, what we got here. And, and I know we've got like the, 
uh, rim fire mods and we've got centre fire mods but just talk us through it in a bit of detail. Yeah, so what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the centre fire range which is called the Deuces okay. uh, and the rim fire range um, which is called the Armour. Okay, so go for it then. But Okay, start, well, start with the rim fires then. Okay, what we've got is our the first uh, rim fire we came up with was the um, Armour Mark One, and this is basically uh, an over barrel moderator, um, takes up to 0.92 of an inch or you know heavy ball barrel. Um, the core um, is basically a monocore design. Use a tool to wind it out for a couple of turns. I have done a video on this quite yeah. a while back. I'll put a link in the details of this video to that video, but yeah. Um, and then this is uh, that's the, the sort of the core design. It's uh, it's proof for all rimfire moderators, uh, all rimfire calibers, so 178 HMR, 22 LR, um, WMR, and um, Mac 2. Um, so it's not caliber specific, which um, makes it quite a a sort of a um, I don't know what the word is uh, good value for money because it's yeah. uh, it's 155 pounds. But you can, um, if you've got the uh, the authorization on your license, you can switch it between rifles. Right. Okay. So that's good. And then the EOB, which is end of barrel, is basically an identical core design, as you can see. Well, let me do that in the white so you can see that. Um, which is, um, but uh, without the over barrel section, it's um, just a tad. We're talking like sort of negligible one or two decibels louder than the Mark 1. Right. Um, it's not really noticeable. Because you know, of the, the, the shortness ear. of it basically. Yeah, because you haven't got an expansion chamber behind. Uh, the, way that, right. the way that I've designed the core is that the gas, as the gas flows through, it's got a series of hurdles to go up and over and up and over. Right. And that sucks. Not only does it take longer for the gas to come out of the moderator, which is hence it being quieter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, um, the core acts as a heat sink and can suck some of the heat out of the gas which means the gas shrinks in volume and then right. you've got less gas to deal with anyway it's only it's marginal but uh, basically you're you're losing this much volume in the over barrel section on the mark uh, on the EOB however the EOB is 100 pounds instead of 155 okay. um, it's quite a nice sort of light package uh, you're talking 216 grams for this and you're talking about 160 grams for right, okay. that one. Which that is, quite, is super lightweight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah very lightweight. Um, 60, 60, um, 60, 68 aluminium. Right. Uh, type 2 hard anodized, so it's um, sort of long lasting and uh, yeah, nice, durable And easy finish. to clean as well, aren't they? Like, you... Yeah, personally, what I like to do is uh, take the sleeve off of the core and yeah. chuck it in an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, not the dishwasher you, guys if, if you've got if you've got um, <laughs> it's, that's that's absolutely fine if I you, would. yeah if you haven't got a sonic cleaner um, you could chuck it in your tumbler you could chuck it in the dishwasher or you can just get a hot soapy water and put it in the sink just don't tell the wife yeah <laughs> better than cool. an engine block um, <laughs> why have you done that <laughs> no never of course not <laughs> honest <laughs> um, so those are the two rim fires uh, okay. and that comes with a tool which um, the tool is a, a three um, steel dowels which locate in the holes in the front, if you can see Just that. Just demo it, mate. Yeah, demo so it. They, they go in there, crack it that way round, just to loosen it off, and then you, like you saw earlier, yep. wind that up. Cool. So those are the rim fires. And then what we've got, okay. go on, do you wanna? No, no, carry on, carry on. And then what we have here is the Juicis uh, center fire range. So you've got EOB, which is end of barrel, OVB, which is over barrel, and the RPR version, which is designed specifically for the Ruger Precision Rifle uh, in 308 calibre. Right. Okay. The only difference between these uh, three moderators is that the core design from, from forward of the muzzle, it's all identical, but you have different, you either have no over barrel section or the standard over barrel section or a slightly longer over barrel section that yep. comes right up to the handguard on, okay. the, on the RPR. And that was sort of quite a popular request so that's why we've we've come up with that the rpr is a is a blasted be blasted matte finish um but they're all type 2 hard anodized the guys would have seen that at the start of the video because you there's a bit of footage at the start of the video that you will have seen uh, yep. of us uh, sort of showing these showing you these in the field as well but yeah sorry mate carry on sorry so we'll start with the basically the eob it's a nice uh system because what you can do is you buy one moderator and with a few little changes you can turn it into uh, a number of other moderators whether that right. be uh changing the thread changing the caliber yeah or um personally i quite like to use the eob stalking because you know i don't need it you know 
super duper quiet. Right. But I don't, and I don't want the extra weight. Okay. So I take this out, and then if I'm on the range all day, I'll um, screw on the over barrel section, and then I get a bit more suppression. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's a bit heavier, but it doesn't really bother me too much. Okay. Um, so basically, it comes with two tools to strip them down if if need be. Um, which we'll we'll get on to later. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about those in a bit. But yeah. basically, the core design is uh, it consists of uh, you can see this this dot at the front that denotes the caliber. So on the core sleeve and every baffle inside, if it has one dot, it's a two two caliber. Okay. If it has two dots, it's twenty five cal, and three dots is thirty cal. Okay. Um, which is a, a, a sort of a nice touch. They're all proofed um, as well. This is called the barrel mount. So if you take the barrel mount off. hands in the way. You can change the thread you know to go on a different rifle by changing this piece here. In this piece, uh, if I get the light right, uh, there's an o-ring in there and that compresses the core, it's high temperature o-ring that keeps the core under compression so that as this, as it gets hot and cools down, right, um, it's always putting pressure on the core to keep it in place. Right, got you. So right. we'll set that aside. What you do is you keep your finger over the end, tip this up, this is where you Not, screw up on the camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, the core sleeve, core sleeve comes off, and then this is the. Wow, look at that! It's like the, the inside core. of a jet engine. That thing is. And that's the titanium core, and that consists of. A, um, at this end, you've got this is called the compressor. These are the baffles or tur baffles, um, and then this is the core packer here. So what happens is, if I pin that between my fingers, as the bullet comes out of the muzzle near my thumb, um, the gas. You know, on a 308, you're looking at around 64,000 psi of pressure in the breech. So all the okay. gas that's coming down the barrel, you know, under a massive amount of pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as that bullet pops into this chamber, the gas wants to relax suddenly, release behind, and try and get to as low a pressure as it can. Yeah. Um, so what it does is it expands into this first chamber here, and then um, what happens is if we look down this way, um, the bullet passes through the first. Um, uh, you know, through the first baffle, and a, a portion of the gas gets sent down these veins. <clears throat> wow. And basically, what happens is we've played around for this is probably taking three years of development. Yeah. But we've come up with so far, you know, there'll, there'll always be a, a sort of next generation, so we'll carry on improving it. Yeah. Um, but what works well the best at the moment is if we, if we alternate the direction of the veins in the baffles, yeah. Um, basically, the gas has to travel further. Because it's on a on, it's on an angle, it's about yeah, works yeah. out to be about rather than, rather than sort of straight. Yeah, obviously, yeah. it's got to yeah. Exactly. So a traditional baffle system basically puts up a, a series of fences or you know like brick walls. The yeah, gases, yeah. To it, stop it and it, redirect it. it exactly, like, and, and, yeah. and the gas is flying through, and it goes, oh, I can't go through, and it takes longer and longer. Okay. Um, so this is a just a different take on that, and to to make the gas work as it comes down the moderator and through the baffles, uh, again with the rim fire these. Uh, veins also act as a heat sink, so they right. suck some of the some of the heat out of it. Right, yeah. This is um, like a radiator, basically. Yeah. 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 So, uh, obviously, I forgot to mention this is a titanium, full titanium, uh, commercially pure grade two core. So, it's forty five percent lighter than stainless steel grades. And it's not going to rot. It's, but it's tougher, yeah. um, and it doesn't rot. The the nice thing about it is all of these baffles are interchangeable. So what we can do is when your first baffle starts to wear. You put that onto the front and move them all back. Ah, right, so you okay. keep alternating. So this this wears at twenty five percent of the rate of a traditional moderator. Right. Okay. Because a lot of moderators, although you have other moderators that are um, sort of interchangeable, and you can, uh, you know, you might be able to buy a new core and, or yeah, buy, yeah. buy yeah. a new um, yeah inner section and replace it. Um, this this means you can keep all the same the original bits and be titanium. It's you know it Brilliant. it lasts a lot longer. And then what happens is. Um, it all sort of just falls apart in your hands, <laughs> and then then you've got all your individual parts. So the let's have a look at one of those. Wow, they really are pretty cool, aren't they? So they take quite a long time to machine. They're about imagine, um, yeah. forty-five minutes a piece. Obviously, time just so forward. light though, aren't they? Yeah. Wow. So it's a good. It's a, it's a nice. It's a nice solution, we think. Um, yeah, and yeah, it, What definitely. you need to be aware of is if you do have several, we have some customers that have got several different calibers, is that you don't chuck all of your mods in the dishwasher or the, or the cleaner at once and then put these together. You know, you've got. In the wrong. Yeah, you put a 2 2 baffle in with the 308 mod. Yeah. And uh, then you're going to have an issue.
Not so uh, there's there is that to to consider. So when you've got uh, all the, the the several bits to to reassemble it, you've got locking lugs um, basically on each baffle. Um, they locate in a pocket in each um, in in each baffle as well. So basically, you just put them together. You sit them. And it doesn't matter what order they go in. They, you just no. It's um, you, you can choose. So like I said, if one's getting sort of more worn than the other um, you can just, just swap them out and put them in different positions the uh, the compressor sits in a in the front and then the core again the three lugs at the back which are used to position the each um, each baffle also locates on the core packer right so that just sits in there like that and then that's that's cool that's the core and then to put it back together you sit it on the table <laughs> this is where it'll all go wrong. <laughs> no, yeah. sit it on the table you uh, get the core sleeve Oh, that's the way to pop go. it over the pop it over the top like that put your finger underneath and then you've got all of that in position and it's all obviously located on the bore of the uh, the core sleeve yeah so if we put this bit if we put this bit back on that becomes the um, the end of barrel moderator yeah but if you want to turn that into an um, one thing <laughs> we do say to people is like don't open it like this or upside down because it all falls out obviously right yeah which is a uh, so you hold it hold it out right at the range. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had someone do that over my rifle and uh, dropped it all over the scope. Nice. Um, so that's the over barrel section, which basically allows the gas, uh, if we can get the light right again. So. Yeah, I'll bring it right up to the camera because there's a light on the camera. Oh, is that? Oh, okay. Uh, right, so you've got holes in the back uh, or in, in this face here. So that allows the gas to come back into a, into a chamber here. Okay. So and basically what you do is you take that bit screw it on the front section and then what happens is when you get close so you've got a slight gap where the daylight comes through here what you've done there is you've met the o-ring and then with a few more turns you compress the o-ring to keep the core under compression right until they come up tight and then you've got your overbarrel moderator Brilliant. what we've done as well is um, with over barrel moderators they generally come with a nylon or a Delrin bush which you then you see buy, buy a moderator and then you've got to get someone with a lathe to turn it out um, to the diameter of your barrel okay um, I don't really like that idea so what we've come up with is a high temperature rubber gasket that sits in here this is a locking ring it comes with another tool that you just undo that you tell us what diameter your barrel is we laser cut you out one of these gaskets uh, you drop it in the back of your mod with the locking ring, and then it's done. So this out comes off at the mod down, and that's your rubber flexible rubber gasket. So you can then, when you put it on a different rifle, you, they come engraved with the size as well. Yeah, yeah. You uh, you get a different a different gasket. Drop it in the pocket in the back. Put the locking ring back in. Yeah. Nip it up with the tool, and then it's. Brilliant. Good to go. Which saves you having to, you know, I've, I've done been in the position before, you buy a moderator and then you've got to go pay someone else to, you know, yeah, yeah. to go and do a bit more work and it's another few days before you can uh, go and use your moderator, which um, is slightly Annoying. sort of frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then these, yeah, these are exactly the same other than the, you can probably see it, on the, you've got a bit more sheen on the um, over barrel, the standard over barrel, OVB, right. to the RPR. Which is this one, and it's just a longer. So glossy and matte. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And that's that. So this is the tool, is is sort of a universal tool, which has got pins and holes in all different directions. The smaller pins are to, to be so that you can take um, if the if your barrel, you know, if you put it onto your rifle really tight, before it's seized up because you've uh, got it really really dirty, and you can't get it apart by hand just by you know doing this. The tool, those pins go in those holes. You can either put a, a big, a big screwdriver through this hole, right, or a smaller screwdriver or whatever you've got in here, or you can use a adjustable spanner across these flaps. How would you get on that though? Get that on if it's on your barrel. So this is uh, no. So if you get it off to get it off. Oh, your, sorry. Um, what I meant was you've put it on your barrel really tight. Yeah. And then you've tightened this to this. When oh, you and do that, that, that bit's this, too tight. Yeah, right, this all comes you. off the rifle, right. and then you then you can't get these two apart. Right, got you. Um, if it was that, if it was stuck on your rifle, what you would do is you would undo this like this, 
all of the core sleeve and the and, and the inners would would come off yeah and it would leave this on the rifle right if that happens so let's pretend I the rifles my finger here yeah the other side of the tool it has bigger uh, pins okay. and those pins fit in there's if you see there's some more those holes, holes more holes in there right. so they fit in there and then again you can get a tool across so there and just get a wrench in and just exactly crack it. And, then, yeah. and then crack it off um so if you can't get it it's the other side if you can't get the two apart they go really? in there and then untighten it and also the over barrel section in here is strippable right if you want to clean that i never do because it doesn't really get that dirty okay um the and it's the same tool so it's the same whole position as as in there so you use that that's that side of the tool again right um one lot of everything <laughs> well we try it's been a long time sort of in the making and it's yeah. um it's one of those things that the essence of good design is is sort of trying to foresee all the problems all that the someone's going to have yeah, yeah. and um you yeah. know lots of people encounter that when you buy something and go well why have they done it like that yeah yeah uh, no one <laughs> no one likes to be in that position yeah um it's worth saying that the 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 core is we, we call it a dft which is dynamic flow technology core okay. so the idea is that you get the gas flowing forward and you know working as it's going forward um what that means is it's not designed as a traditional over barrel moderator right so it's most effective um is it, for its size to weight to cost ratio, it's most effective as an as an end of barrel moderator. Right. Um, we have people that request obviously these because they want to squeeze out a bit more suppression, and they you know they don't mind the extra length cost yeah, and weight. Yeah. Um, but because we're getting the gas flowing forwards, it's not as efficient as a traditional moderator in getting the gas into this rear section. Right. So other you know traditional cone type baffle moderators that are good at gas cutting it and sending it backwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as, as over barrel moderators go. I mean, it's still, you know, hang, hold, they hold up their own with all the other, you know, good moderators out there. But yeah. as a, I personally say to people that if you're, you know, for, depending on what you want from it, the EOB is the best one. This one retails um, at 340, £340. Pounds. Um, these two are 400 um, If you buy one of these with that, uh, with a with a barrel mount, yeah, to make to give you both, you know, all the both variations. Options, yeah, yeah. Um, it's four hundred and twenty. Right. Okay. Let's have a look at your notice. You've got. Uh, we'll just show them the packaging. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. And you've got um instruction manual as well. Have you? Yeah. So the the packaging. Go on, talk us sorry. So the, just yeah, the packaging for the armor EOB is a small, you know, small tube. Um, the armor. EOB is the same, but obviously a bit bigger. Um, each moderator, if I take, if I take the cap off, um, you've got foam inside that sort of supports the moderator in transit. And then you've got your sort of instruction instruction manual, cool. which will tell you uh, how to look after it and um, the specs and decibels and guarantee. And uh, the Armour series comes with a lifetime guarantee, uh, yeah. li limited lifetime guarantee. And then the Juicis, Range, which is named after where we are, we uh, our workshops in Collinbourne Juices. Right, okay. So which is why we call it the Juices. <laughs> um, and then the uh, same sort of design for the centerfire ones, and that's a sort of a nice render of the of the core. That comes with a again a, a user manual, and in that it's it's a bit more in depth because there's more to it. Um, so you've got how you know how the variations of how you use the tool, how to look after it, disassembling it. Uh, you then got a, a sort of schematic and all the parts because if you say you lose the mow rings or you want a different right, uh, barrel gasket or or you've you know you've lost one of your uh, baffles yeah you know you phone us up and go yeah, I need a number three and then we you know send you one out we won't phone you up and say we need a number two yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so and then you've got your your lengths and weights and uh, all the threads and stuff and then you've got your um caliber identifications with the uh th the three you know how many dots you've got on each sleeve um, and, and what those dots, so number of dots, mean what what caliber that moderator is, and what the maximum bullet size is. Right. Because cool. it's not you know you say 25 cal, um, but people or you know say people think 303. Well, that'll go down to 30. Well, actually, the bullet me measures at 311, 311 thou. Right. Okay. So depending on the caliber and where it was designed depends on how big it actually measures. Okay. Um, and then you've got the core arrangement, how it how it goes together, and like you said about you know, switching, putting them in different orders, and then the um, barrel gasket at the back, basically. Okay. 
and that's uh, and then warranty and guarantees. Brilliant. On the back. I'll throw in some details at the bottom of the video with, um, to your website. Yep. So people can sort of just jump in on that. But that's that's about it, is it? We uh, we covered pretty much everything. Yeah. Well, well you have. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been standing here watching, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. It's a good. We we sort of um, as a side note, we pride ourselves on sort of our um, after sales and, and looking after people. I sort of you see it all too often that, especially in the in the gun trade, of people just want to get your money and then um, yeah, get, yeah get you out of the shop. Uh, we we're very proud of what we've you know of the products we do, and uh, this is obviously a our moderator range we do other things as yeah. well and you so see we, the quality of the the products as well it's really cool alistair thanks very much ali thank you very much <laughs> thank you for having me now uh, yeah no problem um guys obviously you can see why i've got uh, ali in to talk about these because i haven't got a clue what he was talking about for the last half an hour <laughs> but anyway guys that's it that's rock and low see ya